So tonight I'm going to be photographing the lobster claw. Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Tonight I'm going to be in the garden photographing the lobster claw nebula and the bubble nebula. So these two are right next to each other in the constellation Cassiopeia and with my 400mm telescope I can frame them really nicely in the same image. So I've already collected the HA and the O3 data on this target. So I've had two nights on this target already. I think I got about 25 seven minute subs on the HA and I've captured 30, but I think a little bit of cloud went over on the O3 data. So um, yeah, hopefully I can, I've got enough O3 um, for, for the final image, but I'm sure I'll find that out soon enough. So tonight I'm uh, capturing the S2. It's supposed to be really clear all night long. Um, so I should get three hours of data on that. So this is what a single sub looks like for the O3. I'll put that up on screen now so you can see it. And um, there's quite a lot of uh, detail in the actual bubble of the bubble nebula, as you would expect with that O3 shining through. And the HA is also looking quite good. There's a lot more detail in the actual lobster claw nebula with the with the HA data and you can actually see the outline of the bubble and the lobster claw quite nicely there. So I'm really excited by this this image and I just hope that I can get enough data. Now it while it is supposed to be clear all night long it is really warm um, which is where a cooled camera comes in uh, comes in really handy. It's still about 20 degrees at the moment and it's about half 10 um, and the humidity is around 75-80% according to the Met Office so I don't think it's going to get much colder and my light has just failed. <laughs> Okay, so my light has just died there, so hopefully you can still see me. You'll definitely still be able to hear me anyway. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, it's going to be very humid tonight um, and still quite warm throughout the night. I think the lowest it's meant to get is about 15 degrees. So like I said, this is where a cooled camera comes into to play and this is where hopefully I can get that noise-free data even though it is a hot summer's evening. Now, I was actually inspired to photograph this target after watching Chuck's video. Now, I'm sure you all know who Chuck is, but he got an A-pod for his image on this target and it really inspired me to to actually give it a go and photograph it myself his image was just absolutely stunning having the the bubble next to the lobster claw in one frame with a wide field scope um just looked absolutely beautiful so i thought i'd give it a go myself and hopefully i can get um half as good a data that, that chuck collected but I don't really have much to, to else to, to show you tonight. Um, I'm using the ASI 2600 mono. I've got the Ascar 400 millimeter telescope um, and it's all being controlled with the ASI Air Pro through my iPad here. Um, sat on top of the NEQ6 mount. Um, so the, the guiding should be quite good. Um, and yeah, I'm just hoping that I can collect the last little bit of S2 data and then pull together an image. So I'm going to set up a time lapse now, so you should be able to see this, the scope run all night long. Um, and then I'll show you the data in the next little clip. Okay, so I managed to capture nearly 10 hours on this target across the three filters. So I just thought I'd quickly show you that data before I edit it into a final image. So this is what the HA is looking like, and I'm quite pleased with this. There's a lot of detail um, in both the lobster claw nebula and, and the, the bubble nebula right next door as well, which is great. Um, so this is 27 seven minute subs with the gain set to 100 and the um, the cooling at minus 10. So like I said, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with, with this data. It's looking quite um, quite clean, quite nice. A lot of detail in there, not a, not a huge amount of noise as well. So, so that's looking good. The O3, there's a little bit less data in as you would imagine or you would expect, um, but you can start to see the lobster claw in, in there and the bubble nebula is looking quite nice as well. So 
so that's good um, that bubble should be really bright blue in the in the final image uh, hopefully fingers crossed anyway um, the s2 data I'm not overly happy with it is um, I think the stars are slightly uh, bloated they could be a little bit tighter a little bit sharper um, I don't know whether I just missed focus or um, or, or the stars are, are bloating for another reason maybe there's a little bit of cloud um, but it doesn't look as clean as the the other data um, but there is still quite a, a, a lot of information in in those images um, so so yeah that's uh, that's the the data um, hopefully I can edit it into a nice final image um, these are just completely just automatically stretched so I haven't done any processing to these um, these are just straight out of camera um, so hopefully this processes into a nice image I'm going to use the Hubble palette so SHO um, and combine that I need to do that in a second um, shouldn't be too much of an issue these two nebulas look quite um, quite similar in terms of brightness there's not a huge amount of, uh, of brighter areas the bubble the center of the bubble is a little bit brighter um, this this nebula separate nebula down here I think it's um, NGC 7538 um, is looking really bright really overexposed so I might not be able to recover that but I will give it a go. So I was just looking at this image and one thing that always blows my mind no matter how many times I take an image of deep space is just the sheer size that is uh, that is on display here. So if you look at the, the bubble at the centre of the bubble nebula, so just this tiny bubble here, this is about seven light years across. So the size of that bubble is about seven light years. Now just to give that a little bit of context, our solar system, according to NASA, uh, stretches out way beyond our planets, so from the Sun all the way out beyond Pluto, all the way, way out to the edge of the Oort cloud, is 1.87 light years. So all of our solar system, including the Oort cloud, could fit into this one bubble nearly four times, just under four, four times. And then when you zoom out and look at the whole scale of this, whole image or this whole region of space is just um, just mind-blowing just really hard to, to get your head around those distances those size and those sizes and it's just one one reason why I find it so fascinating I think but yeah I just thought I'd share that with you quickly um, but yeah now I need to combine this into um, the Hubble palette and then hopefully you will enjoy the final image at the end of the video so thank you so much for for watching please let me know your thoughts in the comments below Please hit that like button, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.